I know. All right. It is 830. So I will get started. Good morning, Riverside Dragons. Today is Wednesday, September 30th, the very last day of September. And everybody is virtual today. Happy, happy virtual day. We'll start just like we start every day. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everybody will please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you can be seated. All right, I did birthdays yesterday. So to, I do need to say happy birthday though to Mrs. DeLeon. Her birthday was yesterday and I found out secretly that she turned 21 yesterday. All right, all right. Does it seem like I'm somewhere not in my office today? I wonder where I am. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about being leaders and about being bored. Right, Mrs. Campbell? Yes. We talked All about right. being proactive. So we're doing yes. that proactive, being related to being bored. Right. So, because when you are in charge of yourself, you need to be proactive to be doing other things and doing um doing things uh, for yourself. So I am going to turn it over. I'm going to turn off my camera so I'm not distracting. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Campbell and Mr. Vasilio. And then when I come back, I'm going to show you where I am on this special field trip. Because this is a place I like to go when I'm bored. Okay, take it away, Mrs. Campbell. All right, good morning, everyone. So great to see you this morning. So as Mrs. Donovan said, we're going to talk about being bored. And we're, the reason we're talking about that, we're talking about being strong leaders and being proactive. And so one of the things related to that for you at your age is to take charge of yourself when you're feeling bored. You shouldn't have to run to grown-ups at home and say, I'm bored, I'm bored. You should have, be able to find things to do when you are bored on your own. So we're going to talk about some ways to help you do that and some ways for you to help yourself do that. So that's being proactive, being in charge of yourself so that you don't have to grow, go to a grown up and say, I am bored. You are in charge of yourself. You're going to make sure you're not bored anymore. When my kids were little, a lot of times, especially my son would say, I'm bored when it was when he couldn't have his electronics. Give me a thumbs up if you sometimes feel like you're bored when you can't do your electronic, your video games or your electronics. Thumbs up if you're sometimes bored when you can't do electronics. Oh good, so thumbs down so you can find out if some of you are bored. All right, so it looks like we have some thumbs up and then people who are not doing electronics sometimes you still find other things to do. All right, well that's great because we're gonna find other things that are not electronics. <clears throat> Mr. Ackley's class was nice enough to help give some of their ideas about what they do when they're bored. And so I'm gonna show you some of those ideas that we got from Mr. Ackley's class. The first idea was from Nico. All right, I don't know if Nico's here. I can't see, you know, there's quite a few people here. Oh, there he is, Nico is here. So Nico, idea, when he is bored, he plays games. I put a whole bunch of different kinds of games on here. There's a board game. There's soccer, that's a game. There's hopscotch, those are all different kinds of games. And Nico plays games. I have a feeling he meant kind of board games. Maybe. So that was Nico's idea to play games when you're bored. Another friend who had an idea was Aaron. And I see that Aaron is here. Aaron, you can wave. Aaron idea was to play with her pets. That's what she does. And I just put pictures of kids with different kinds of pets up here. And it looks like they're taking care of their pets here. They're feeding their pet. And playing with your pets is important too for them because they need some loving and they need care and they need you to play with them. So 
Erin took care of her boredom and also took care of her pets at the same time. Thanks, Erin. All right, and the next one is Hoyt. I don't know if I see Hoyt. I can't see Hoyt here now, but maybe he is here. I'm not sure, but this is Hoyt's here idea. Hoyt plays with Legos. Thumbs up if you like to play with Legos when you're bored. How many like to play with Legos? Oh, good. Lots of thumbs up. That's a great idea. Lots of kids like Hoyt, uh, like, are like Hoyt, and they play with their Lego. Oh, and we had Seth. I don't see Seth on my screen, but he might be on here. Seth, from Mr. Ackley's virtual class, said he plays with his Hot Wheels cars. So how many of you like to play with cars? Thumbs up if you like to play with cars when you are bored. Some do, some don't. All right, that's another great idea. Oh, we had Brianna. Brianna also gave us a great idea for her. She plays with dolls, her dolls. I put different kinds of dolls up here. These are more like baby dolls. There's Barbie dolls. There's all different kinds of dolls that you might like to play with. Um, superhero dolls, right? There's all these superhero dolls that you can play with too. Oh, Jack. I saw Jack on here. Jack's idea. It's a good idea. He gets outside and Jack, when he's bored, he takes a walk. There's some kids taking a walk. You can wave, Jack. So that's a great idea. He gets outside and he takes a walk. Thanks for that idea, Jack. And Misayet also has an idea that's outside. And that is she goes outside and plays in the park. I hope I said her name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, anyway, um, so she goes to play in the park. So those are Mr. Ackley's virtual friends who um, gave us some of their great ideas. The other thing, I hope you're all listening because this is something you can do at home. If you wanted to, you could, even today, you can make a jar of ideas, including some of those ideas, like this. I'm going to hold this picture up here. See, this is a jar with popsicle sticks in it. You could take popsicle sticks and put ideas, right ideas, right on there. That will tell you what to give you some ideas that you thought of. I see Juan is paying really close attention. He's trying to think of ideas right now, I bet. What he could do when he's bored, he can write them on the popsicle sticks and put them in the jar. Now, you might not have popsicle sticks, and you might not have a jar. Maybe you just have a jar and you can put up pieces of paper on in that jar. You could use a peanut butter jar after you're all finished with the peanut butter, or a jelly jar after you're all finished with the jelly, and put a piece of paper with lots of your ideas for what to do when bored. All right, and we have, oh, some, you can even do it in a bowl. This is a cereal bowl, and keep your, a bowl of your ideas for what to do when you're bored. Here's another bowl. And, oh, the other ideas, I have two more ideas for, uh, to put your ideas. You can put your ideas for when you're bored in a cardboard box, maybe even decorate the box. And then another idea is to put it in a basket of some sort and keep your ideas in a basket. Now, we had some ideas from our friends. Remember, we'll go outside, play in the park, take a walk from Jack. Brianna said plays with her dolls. Seth said plays with his Hot Wheels. Hoyt plays with his Legos. And Aaron plays with her pets. Nico plays games. I, am going, I have a list here. I'm going to see if you can see this big number. There's a big number there. 150 ideas for when you're bored. Mrs. Donovan is going to send this out on Dojo so that you can look through that list and see if any of those 150 ideas, actually, and there's even more because I have another one, see if any of those ideas are things you would like to do when you're bored. You can put them in your jar or your bowl or your box, whatever you decide to create. So my last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to read some of these ideas that are on this paper that I thought maybe would be some of you would like. Color. Give me a thumbs up if you like to color. If you have nothing to do and you like to color when you're bored. Lots of kids like to color. Grown-ups too. I like to color. I, I like to color. All right. What about playing a card game? You can, there's card games you can play by yourself and there's card games you can play with others. You can play a card game. Give me a thumbs up if you like that idea. Uh, or play a board game. We had that same idea. Um, that was from Nico. How about drawing? Who likes to draw? Thumbs up if you like to draw. 
when you are bored. Okay, so okay if you don't, but some of you do like to draw. Uh, oh, you could just tell a story. Maybe you could tell a story, or if you can write it, write a story or draw a picture of a story. Do a drawing and do a, your own picture book. That's another good idea. How about a sock puppet? Take a sock and pretend it's a puppet and do a sock puppet show. Anybody ever done that? Give me a thumbs up if you ever made a puppet show with socks. Or a thumbs up if you'd like to make a puppet show with socks. There you go. All right. We have also take a walk that was up there. How about, um, oh, jumping jacks. You could do some exercises. You could do some jumping jacks or some other exercises that are fun for you if you're getting bored. And oh, here's one I know your teachers would really like if you would do this. Practice some math. If you're bored, you could practice doing some math. Ooh, I bet your teachers would be happy to hear that you were doing that. <laughs> How about read a book? Thumbs up if you like to read a book sometimes when you're bored. If you don't, it's okay. It's okay. Just that's one idea. Oh, how about having a dance party? And you don't need to have other friends over. Who likes to dance around when they're bored? That's a fun one. Usually it makes you feel really happy when you do that. Yeah, I see lots of shaking heads and thumbs up. All right. Oh, and then the other one is if you have a, someone there, brother or sister, you could play I Spy in your own house. I spy something the color blue. and see if the other person can guess. So that's another. Those are just some ideas. And all these ideas we're going to have send out on Dojo so that you can have a chance to look at them and hopefully make your own jar or bowl or box so that you are in charge of when you're bored. No one should have to go to a grown-up and say, I'm bored. Because you're in charge of you and you're in charge of yourself when you're bored. Now, Mr. Vesselio is going to share a few thoughts on being proactive today. Thanks, Mrs. Campbell. Just like you, we all have directions to follow sometimes. Sometimes there are things we have to do, and other people get to tell us that we have to do them. We all have directions to follow, whether it's laws or rules or just things that are good for other people that we know. Um, and we all have choices to make too. I mean, there are things you can choose to do when you're asked to follow directions and there are things you can choose not to do. We all have some control over what we choose to do, like Mrs. Campbell was saying. If you're feeling like you don't know what to do, maybe it's a good choice to find something to do on your own rather than ask someone else. So we all have choices to make as well as directions to follow. It doesn't matter if you're an adult or you're a kid or you're a student, we all have directions to follow and we all make choices for ourselves sometimes. Sometimes choices get made for us and that's okay. Sometimes we have to make our own choices. Sometimes the things you choose to do for yourself uh, are what you have for breakfast, or maybe what shirt you put on today, or like Mrs. Campbell was saying, how you decide to have fun. There are lots of different choices you can make for yourself. But these choices usually lead to something else for yourself. If you choose to wear a short sleeve shirt on a really cold morning, guess what? You might be cold. All your choices have consequences or things that happen because of your choices. And oftentimes we make choices for the good of ourselves. We want what's good for ourselves. We choose to do things that help us be smarter or be safer or have good things. Um, that's pretty common. We all choose what's good for ourselves. And um, like Mrs. Donovan and Mrs. Campbell were saying, what we want you to do especially for today is choose some things that help you to be interested or show your interest in something else. What do you do when you're not bored? Do you read? Do you take care of your pets? Do you take care of yourself by taking a walk? I mean, there are a lot of things that you can do to choose good things for yourself. Now, the hard part of growing up is choosing good things that are good for yourself and good for other people at the same time. Um, at school, we often say, be safe and be polite and do what's right. 
there are things you can do that are good for other th- other people as well. You can choose to be helpful, whether you're at home or at school or riding in the car. There are things you can do like being quiet or being attentive or answering questions. Those are usually very helpful things for other people, not just for yourself. When somebody asks you for information, they ask you for a question um, and you answer it truthfully and correctly, that's usually you being helpful. And it's not only good for you, but it's good for other people, maybe the person who's driving the car. So while we say be safe, be polite and do it right, it's also a matter of you choosing good things for yourself and you choosing good things for other people. Um, When you're polite and when you're doing what's right, it's not only good for you, it's usually good for other people. So when you are making good decisions for yourself and for others, we call that being responsible. And being responsible for yourself and for others is one of the best things you can focus on when you're trying to grow up. Growing up's tough. There are a lot of choices to make. There are a lot of decisions to make. But in choosing the things that are safe and polite and right for you and other people, you will become more responsible. And It's a good thing for everybody to be more responsible, especially for yourself and for other people. Um, You'll often hear us say to, when, when you're making decisions, that you're going to be making decisions that have an effect on you or something will happen because of this decision. So do your best to keep in mind the, the effects of your decisions, the things that happen before you make those choices. Try to think of things that are good for you and good for other people as well. Especially when it comes to like Mrs. Campbell was saying, not being bored because you are responsible for you. You have to figure out what's important to you and what you're interested in and what's good for you. Because in the end, it might not only be good for you, it might be good for other people too. Like your pets, not just people, but sometimes it's pets. So like Mrs. Campbell said, do your best to figure out what's important to you and make some good choices so you won't be bored. There's no reason for any of us to be bored. There's so much going on and so many things to learn. Do your best to keep learning and figuring out what's good for yourself and for other people. You can make good choices for yourself. You can make good choices for other people. You can be your own leader, okay? Don't forget those things while you're doing your schoolwork for the rest of the week. We'll do another chat here next Wednesday. But I think Mrs. Donovan has a few extra words is that true? I do. I do. Thank you so much, Mr. Vesselio and Mrs. Campbell for showing us and talking to us about um, being in charge of ourselves and being uh, not bored and find, giving us some ideas of not bored. So I thought today I would go to one of my favorite places when my daughter is home visiting me and we are bored because sometimes it gets boring when you're at home doing nothing, right? And we decide we need to go do something. So we come here. Does anybody know where I am? I am at Eldridge Park. This is right here in Elmira. And when you're bored, it's beautiful to come here, whether it's sunny, whether it's cold. Uh, Even when it's rainy this morning, it was a little damp and rainy. But there are people here that are walking all around the pond. And right here is my favorite spot. It's hard to see because it's not open today, but it's the putt-putt course. And it's a really hard one. Um, So I'll show you another putt-putt course and a different day that we like to go to when we're bored too. So I'm walking around so that you can see in case you've never been to Eldridge Park because Eldridge Park is so, so cool. It's beautiful. There are people here this morning that are fishing They are over there. I don't know if you can see over there fishing because there are fish here. And in the summertime over here, there are paddle boats and they look like like dragons or dinosaurs. So this is a perfect place for a Riverside student to go because there's some dragon boats that they can go. You can go paddling in and see there are some people that are walking this morning, getting some exercise. And in that building right there is the really exciting fun thing. And I wish I could show you. I thought maybe it would be open, but 
that's the carousel. And if you've never been on a carousel, it's horses and beasts and things like that. And it goes around and around in a circle. And they have a, um, this one goes pretty fast and they have a golden ring that if you're sitting on one of the outside horses, you can try and grab. So, and then there's other things that are new that I haven't seen before. Looks like some rides or things like that. But this is a beautiful place to go when you're bored. And I know that Mrs. Campbell mentioned reading a book. That's another thing you can do when you're bored. And you could come here and read a book under a tree. There's lots to do here. So tell your family sometime if you guys have trying to think of something to do because you're bored. This is a great place to come. All right. So next Wednesday, who knows? I might be somewhere else. Might be in my office. I don't know. You'll have to wait and see, right? And come back to our town meeting. So let me sit here. Let me see if this bench is oh, it's still a little wet. All right. So we've been talking about being leaders. And remember last week, we sang a song. And I, we are going to sing that again today. So I'm going to share my screen. Then I need to make sure that I share my computer sound. I'm learning, guys. And let me put this as full screen. And here we go. Sing along. Every week, you'll learn more and more. You'll learn the lyrics better and better, and we can sing along. Okay? Here we go.
we are running out of time, boys and girls, so I'm going to cut the video short just a little bit. But there is a leader in each and every one of you. And as we've told you before, we're going to go through all of these. Right now, we're working on be proactive. And you can help your friends with this, too, because not everybody at school is on here today. So you need to share with everybody everything that Mr. Vasilio, Ms. Campbell, and I are talking about so that everybody can be leaders because leaders are readers. That's my favorite phrase. Readers are leaders. Leaders are readers. And Riverside readers and Riverside dragons are the best there is, right? Everybody give me a thumbs up for that one. All right. So remember, everybody, that at Riverside, we are safe polite and do what's right all day long when someone's watching and when no one's watching both at home and in school and today you're all at school and i know you have a very busy day today on your schoology so we will hop off and let you get to your morning meetings and you guys have a marvelous day and always be the i in kind have a wonderful, beautiful day and get outside. No need to be bored today, right? Bye, everybody. <laughs>